Uh, if you know what Nimbin Mardi Gras is, Nimbin Mardi Gras is Australia's largest marijuana music festival. Uh, it starts on a Thursday, because no fuck there has a job. Uh, <laughs> Yes, I'm holding into hippies, strapped the fuck in. Those people stole the soul from my body, right? It was the worst. Like, they absolutely hated me, have no idea why. Anyway, um, <laughs> right, right, but I was, uh, I was performing at Nimbin Mardi Gras, right, uh, on a comedy stage very similar to this. This is an absolute lie. It was not similar to this at all. It was in a tent in the forest, right, and there was, like, the lady who was running it was high on PCP, uh, and she was scared of the stage light. So just imagine this in total darkness, right? <laughs> Fucking ace, right? Right, so the, um, the comedy stage was here, right, and then next to the comedy stage, pretty stock standard, uh, was an anti-vaxxers booth. <laughs> comedy stage here, anti-vaxxers booth here. Right, and on the anti-vaxxers booth, right, was six photos of six kids that had apparently died from vaccines, right, with six candles lit for each of those kids. You guys don't need to know much about stand-up comedy, but all you need to know is dead kids don't help. <laughs> like, it was a tough time for Brett up there, you know? Like, I died so hard on that stage that night, I fucking lit a candle for myself, you know what I mean? I was like, RIP my career. I even whacked up a photo. People walking by the next day, it's like, has that baby got a beard? <laughs> That is wild and a sick mullet. <laughs> I may have added that last bit in, but anyway. Um, uh, but before we got to Nimbin, uh, I had to meet a bus driver in Byron Bay, right? And his job was to drive me, him, and a sea of hippies down there, right? To Nimbin, right? And I automatically liked this guy. This guy's name was Terry. I automatically liked him because in order to drive a bus, you must hold a mid-rigid truck license. <laughs> I also hold a mid-rigid truck license, so we had mutual respect for each other. Uh, <laughs> Technically, I hold it heavy rigid, but I didn't want to alpha dog him too early into the journey, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't want to rock up to the bus and be like, if this thing was over 22 tons and had three axles, I'd fucking destroy it, right? I, I didn't want to be that guy, right? Um, so uh, Terry's job was drive me, him, and a sea of hippies down to Nimbin, but also Terry had to load up everyone's luggage, slash Hessian sacks, slash all balls, slash dream catchers, right? And eventually Terry snapped and yelled the most truest statement I've ever been heard yelled in my life before, right? Terry just snaps and loudly yells, How many fire twirlers does the world really need? <laughs> I was like, preach, my king, preach. <laughs> We're going to get along just fine, right? <laughs> So we, uh, we started driving down to Nimbin. Uh, obviously, I sat in the front seat, once again holding the mid-rigid truck license. Uh, if Terry needed a break, I could just sub myself in. You know, not a problem at all. Also, it was an automatic, so a bit of a coward's game. Anyway, I um, <laughs> could probably do it in my sleep. One trailer. Anyway, yuck. Anyway, so, um, so we started driving down to Nimbin, uh, right? And about 15 minutes into the journey, right? One of the hippies at the back produced a tambourine. What are the odds? <laughs> 110%, right? <laughs> Terry hears that, absolutely not having a bar of it, just loudly turns up ACDC over the top. <laughs> I was like, fuck, I love you, Terry. Uh, nothing is funnier than that, right? But I was wrong, right? Because 45 minutes go by into the journey. Someone jumped into the aisle, into the aisle of a moving vehicle, right? With a set of bongo drums, right? Just starts fucking giving it all that, right? <laughs> Terry clocks that in the rear view mirror, absolutely not having a bar of it, just pumps the brakes. The guy goes down like a bag of shit. <laughs> I was like, here's the paperwork, Terry. <laughs> You are now my dad. <laughs> Classic dad. Uh, nah, that's a joke. Uh, my dad holds a heavy truck combo license. Uh, I would never respect a mid-rigid coward. <laughs> right? Um, so eventually we got to Nimbin, right? And I was, uh, I was in a normal shop, like a normal, normal gift shop or whatever it's called, right? And this hippie guy walks into the shop. Hippie guys, you know what they look like. Dreadlocks, nose ring, full kit. And by now, a few of you are asking, Brett, were you high on edibles? Absolutely, yes. Anyway, um, <laughs> right? So this hippie guy walks into the shop. You know, they've got just too much colour. Anyway, right, he walks, he walks into the shop, walks up to the shop assistant and goes, excuse me, do you have any wolf rings? Like the animal a wolf? 
on her ring. Do you have any wolf rings? And she goes, yeah. In the wolf ring section. Right, and me like you took that as absolute sarcasm. Right, you've got to remember, this is Nimbin though. She is being deadly serious, right? Right, she takes this guy over to the wolf ring section, right? There is literally 40 wolf rings in this wolf ring section, right? And he starts scanning through all 40 wolf rings and just goes, no. <laughs> None of them are for me, right? And I fucking laughed, right? I laughed so loud. I was like, ah! <laughs> right, he heard me, he come up to me. He's like, oh, whoa, 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 what are you laughing at? I said, brother, that is the funniest thing I have ever seen in my life. Like, what are the odds that one shop has one wolf ring, <laughs> let alone 40 wolf rings? And none of those rings are suitable for you. <laughs> like, that's comedy, dude, right? And he snapped, he goes, he snapped, he goes, soon as you, soon as you find your spirit animal, soon as you find your spirit animal, you'll take things very seriously. I was like, brother, I've already found my spirit animal. His name's Terry, pumped the brakes on you before. <laughs> Took you down like a bag of shit. <laughs>